welcome back to this NPTEL course on game theory. In the previous session we introduced this graphical games as a way another way of looking at impartial game and then we also discussed the addition of these games. We also introduced the spray Grundy function of a impartial game. In this session we are interested in proving this spray Grundy theorem. So, let me recall the the spray Grundy function. So, let us say if x f is a game the spray Grundy function of this game is defined in the following way g of a position x is defined to be the max minimum excluded value of g of y such that y is an f x. Okay. This is the minimum non negative integer that is not already given to the followers from this position x. So, now we are interested in the following thing which is the spray Grundy theorem what it says is the following thing. Let us consider n games there are n impartial games and then we have considered this addition of these games we consider the addition of these games of course uh, the x is nothing but x1 cross x2 cross xn the cartesian product and f is defined in the previous case fx1 f of x is nothing but fx1 cross singleton x2 union and other things we have done it. Now, what the Sprague Grundy theorem says is that g of x is nothing but g 1 x 1 x r g 2 x 2 In other words, we say that g. In other words, we say that the spray Grundy function g is nothing but so. This is the spray Grundy theorem. So we'll try to prove. Okay, the proof. So let x belongs to x. So remember, x is has a and coordinates and let take b to be the g1 x1 and we need to show that we will show two things. one for every a less than b any non negative integer a less than b there is a follower of x1 x2 xn that has g value yeah. So, we remember we need to show that this b is nothing but the Grundy value of x to show that what we will do is that you choose any number less than b 
any non negative integer then there will be a follower of x1 x2 xn which has g value a that is the first step and in the second step no follower of x has g value b. So, these are the two steps that we will do it. So, in the first step we will say that the smaller than b has it, the there is a follower of x1 x2 xn and then b for b there is no follower having the value b. So, this is the idea of course then this of course these two imply immediately that g of x is equals to b. So, this is the goal. So, now let us proof of 1. So, let us take a x of b. So, so we will we the idea is essentially to follow the proof of NIM game. So, I will go through the proof because you have already seen the NIM game you can easily connect with that let k be the number of digits in the binary expression of d so that 2 power k minus 1 is less than equals to d less than 2 power k and d has a 1 in the kth position. Okay. So, we are choosing this in the kth position of d there should be 1 and k is in such a way that 2 power k minus 1 less than equals to d which is strictly less than 2 power k. So, that we are looking at it in a sense the largest this it is exactly the same as in the previous this thing. Now, we have a less than b therefore, b has 1 in kth position. Therefore, A will have so A is strictly less than B. So, therefore, in the kth position A will have 0 that is very important. Now, B is given to be G1 X1, this is there. Therefore, because b is nothing but this g1 x1 plus so on g n x n and b has 1 in the kth position. So, therefore, one of these must have 1 in their kth position. Therefore, at least 1 x i is such that the binary expansion of g i x a has 1 in kth position. This follows because b is the, the sum of all this thing in the uh, remember if odd number of if ones are there it becomes 1 otherwise it is 0. So, therefore, in the kth position is a 1. So, there must be odd number of them. So, therefore, it will come just go back to the proof of NIM you will it becomes clearer we have used exactly the same thing. So, for simplicity assume this to be x1. So, what we are saying is that x1 the first one has the 1 in the kth position. Now, D this will be strictly less than G1 X1. 
because in the kth position both of them have 1 therefore d plus g1 x1 in the kth position it will be 0. So, therefore this number has to be less than that so g it will be strictly less than g1 x1. So, therefore there is a move from x1 to some x1 prime with g1 x1 prime is nothing but d ok. So, because this number is strictly less than g1 x1, so therefore there will be a move from x1 to some x1 prime where this g1 x1 prime has to be smaller than this one. This is coming from the definition of this Grundy function or this arithmetic that we have number arithmetic ok. Therefore, the move from x1, x2, xn to x1 prime x2, xn is a legal move in the game g and further what I would like to see the g1 x1 prime plus g2 x2 g n x and this is nothing but d g1 x1 prime is nothing but this I just put there. And this is nothing but d plus b which is nothing but a recall. If you calculate this here d plus b will be a. Okay. This proves the 1. Now we need to prove of 2. Suppose to the contrary x1, x2, xn has a follower with same g value and suppose without loss of generality this involves move in the first game ok. Therefore, let us say from x1, x2, xn you have moved to x1 prime x2 xn. So, this is the move that is giving you the same g, g value let us assume that ok and we are assuming that g1 x1 prime plus g2 x2 gn xn this is same as g1 x1 g2 x2 g n x n. So, now if you recall the number arithmetic if I add g n x n both sides then what will happen is that g n x n plus g n x n and g n x n plus g n x n both sides that becomes 0. So, in a sense you have a cancellation law here you repeatedly you do it you add both sides by g n x n and then g n minus 1 x n and up to g 2 x 2 and all these will cancel what remains here is that g 1 x 1 prime will be same as g 1 x 1. But this is a contradiction that means a follower of x 1 has the same g value as x 1 which is not possible. So, therefore, this contradiction 
whatever we have assumed is incorrect which proves two holes that completes this fact. What we have proved is that the one for any a less than b there is a follower having a g value a and no follower of x has g value b therefore, g of x is b this implies g is nothing but g 1 the sprague Grundy value of this addition of this games satisfies this addition principle. Okay. So, this is a very important result in this theory of impartial games. This works with the games which are progressively bounded that means from any position the number of positions available to you is always finite. So, this is a very important this thing. Any impartial game when you look at this its Sprague Grundy value gives a kind of a identification with a NIM game whose Sprague Grundy value of that is exactly the same. So, in that sense this Sprague Grundy theorem is a remarkable theorem which identifies the following fact. Any impartial game is equivalent to a NIM game where the Sprague Grundy value is nothing but that corresponding the number the number associated with that NIM game. So, this theorem applies to any progressively bounded games and this is a very important thing. We will now see some examples of this theorem. So, we will look at the subtraction game. Okay. So, let us denote by g m is one page one pile subtraction game. where the subtraction set is given by so in a sense if you have a pile of coins and then you can remove at any point of time any coins the number of coins cannot be more than m anything between 1 to m you can remove it so the Sprague Grundy function of this game, the Sprague Grundy let me denote it by G m of x if x is the starting size this is going to be x mod m plus 1. So, how do we prove this fact? In fact, we have seen this earlier when we are looking at the takeaway games and other things we know the this procedure if there are x coins okay, what is its Sprague Grundy function. So, let us try the best way is actually to write down the, the terminal position. So, if g m 0 is nothing but 0 that is that 0 is the terminal position. So, what about g m 1 is going to be exactly 1 and of course, up to g m m this is going to be m. What if there are m plus 1 coins? If there are m plus 1 coins now it is a the player any player the player who is going to make the move he can remove m coins at the most. So, therefore, the, the person who is going to make the move at m plus 1 is going to lose and then if you look at it 
this is going to be simply 0. Okay. So, and in fact this is nothing but m plus 1 mod m plus 1. So, in fact proceeding inductively you can see that g m x is nothing but x x mod m plus 1. Okay. Note that g m x is always in between Zero and m. Okay, now the let's consider sum of three subtraction games. First game, let us take m is equals to three. Nine chips. Let us take. We start with 9 chips. Second has m is equals to 5 and there are 10 chips. Third game m is equals to 7 and pile has 14 chips. Therefore, initial position is going to be 9, 10, 14 the Cartesian product of uh, all the positions. So, therefore, initial position now is going to be 9, 10, 14. So, therefore, we are actually considering the game G3 plus G5 plus G7. This is basically the game that we are considering. Now, we look at the Sprague Grundy value. So, we need to calculate g of 9, 10, 14. This is going to be g 3 of 9 plus g 5 of 10 plus g 7 of 14. So, this is nothing but 1 plus 4 plus 6 which is nothing but you can calculate this value and this is going to be 3. So, so therefore, by looking at this Grundy value, one optimal move is to change the position. in game G7 to have spray Grundy value five. This can be done by removing one chip from the pile of 14 leaving 13. So, apart from this there are other optimal moves. find them. So, the importance of the Sprague Grundy function, Sprague Grundy theorem is that when you have an addition of 
multiple games you can actually start looking at each game individually and start seeing their Sprague values, Sprague Grundy values and use them to see which game you need to play. So, this is here is there is an example and in this case you have a multiple optimal moves here and one optimal move is given here and the other optimal move you can find it as an exercise. We will stop here and we will continue this in the next session.